and I was privileged to share the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And I will tell you what happened in the case of the three Gary Debs. Um, it may have been a comedy or it may have been a tragedy. It cost one man his reason, it cost me a bloodletting, and it cost yet another man the penalties of the law. Holmes had just spent several days in bed, <laughs> a habit of his from time to time, but he emerged that morning with a long, foolscap document in his hand and a twinkle of amusement in his austere grey eyes. Well, Holmes, up at last then. My dear Watson. <laughs> Yes, I had in me the makings of a pretty fine loafer. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got there, Holmes? Oh, this? Uh, a chance for you to make some money. Hey, eh? Well, don't keep me waiting, then. Have you ever heard the name of Gary Deb? Gary Deb? If you can lay your hands on a Gary Deb, there's money in it. Hmm, soon see about that, then. Ah, here we are. The London Telephone Directory. Now, uh... What's it all about, Holmes? Oh, that's a long story. Rather a whimsical one, too. I don't think in all our explorations of human complexities we've ever come across anything more singular. Gaffney, Gator, Gamage, Gannett, Gap, Gorick, Gallinger. Ah, here you are. Gary Deb. N. 136 Little Ryder Street, West. Well, what now, Holmes? Is he the only one? Um, yes. Then I'm sorry to disappoint you. Oh. That's the man who's written me this letter. We want another to match. Confound it, Holmes. I wish to... Come in. Oh. Yes, Mrs. Hudson? A visitor, Mr. Holmes. Oh? Uh, here is his card, sir. Oh, thank you. A uh, Mr. Garadeb. Ah, yes. Ask him to step in, Mrs. Hudson. Yes, sir. Here you are, Watson. Hmm? Oh, thanks. John Garadeb. John Garrideb, Counselor at Law, Moorville, Kansas, USA. A second Garrideb, Watson. But this gentleman is in the plot already, I'm afraid. Plot? I certainly didn't expect to see him this morning. But he'll be able to tell us a good deal that I want to know. Mr. Garrideb, sir. Ah, come in, sir. Come in. Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Uh, ah, yes. Your pictures aren't unlike you, if you don't mind me saying so. Not at all. This is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. How do you do? Pleased to meet you, Dr. Watson. Now, Mr. Holmes, I believe you had a letter from my namesake, Mr. Nathan Garadab. I have had such a letter. I take it you are the Mr. John Garadab referred to in it. That's me? Yes, but surely you've been in England for some time. What makes you say that? Your clothes. Oh? Huh? Your whole outfit is English. What? Well, the shoulder cut of your coat, the toes of your boots. Could anyone doubt it? <laughs> oh, well, I... I, I had no idea I was so obvious a Britisher. But business brought me over here some time ago, and so, as you say, my outfit is nearly all London. What about getting down to that paper there in your hands? Patience, patience, Mr. Garadab. Tell me, why did Mr. Nathan Garadab not come with you? That guy. Why did he ever drag you into it at all? Here was a bit of professional business between two gentlemen, and one of them goes and calls in a detective. I don't want police butting into a private matter. No, indeed. But if you're content just to help us find the man, then there's no harm. Very well. And now, sir, we had best have a clear account from your own lips. My friend here knows none of the details yet. That's quite right. Dr. Watson, if you came from Kansas, you wouldn't need me to tell you who Alexander Hamilton Garadab was. He made his money in real estate, and then in the wheat pit in Chicago. He had no case of kin, but he took a kind of pride in the unusual name he had. That was what brought us together. I was in law at Topeka. One day I had a visit from the old man. He was tickled to death to meet another guy with the same name. It was his pet fad, and he told me he was dead set to find out if there were any more Gary Debs in the world. Find me another, said he, and you won't regret it. I told him I was a busy man. I couldn't spend my life hiking around the world in search of Gary Debs. Nonetheless, he said, that's just what you will do if things pan out as I planned them. Astonishing. And I soon found that there was a powerful lot of meaning in his words. Yes, sir. What happened, Mr. Gary Deb? Alexander Hamilton Gary Deb died. That's what happened, Mr. Holmes. He left a will behind him that was the queerest that as had ever been filed in the state of Kansas. His property was divided into three parts, and I was to have one of them. 
on condition that I find two more Gary Debs to share the remainder. We can't lay a finger on an acre of it until we all three stand in a row. But when we do, it's worth five million dollars for each of us. God gracious. But there isn't another one in the whole United States. I know. I went through it with a fine tooth comb. So I thought I'd try the old country. And sure enough, there was the name in the London telephone directory. I went after this Nathan Garadab and explained the whole matter to him. But he's a lone man like me. With no relatives. Some women, but no men. Yes, but... Uh, the will says three adult males. Oh. So there you are, Mr. Holmes. We still have a vacancy. And if you can help fill it, we'll be very ready to pay your charges. Well, it is certainly a most curious little problem. Yes, I may take a glance at it at my leisure. Uh, I'd be mighty grateful, Mr. Holmes. Oh, by the way, it's curious that you should have come from Topeka. I used to correspond with a gentleman there. Oh? Yes, he's dead now. Old Dr. Lysander Starr. He was mayor in 1890 or thereabouts. Oh, yes. Good old Dr. Starr. Hmm. His name is still honored in Topeka, Mr. Holmes. Well, good day, gentlemen. I reckon you'll hear from me in a day or two. Good day, Mr. Garrett. Sure you are, sir. Holmes, what a business. I was wondering, Watson, what on earth could be the object of this man in telling us such a rigmarole of lies? Lies? I nearly asked him outright, but I thought it better to let him believe he had fooled us. How do you mean, Holmes? Here is a man with an English coat frayed at the elbow and trousers bagged at the knee with a year's wear. And yet, by this document and his own account, he's a provincial American recently landed in London. <laughs> But he's from Topeka, evidently. He knew your old friend, Dr. What's his name? Oh, Lysander Starr. Hmm? I never knew such a gentleman. You didn't? I invented him on the spur of the moment. So you see, Watson, touch this fellow where you would. He was false. We must now find out if our other correspondent is a fraud also. Nathan Gerdes. Exactly. Perhaps you'll be so kind as to ring him up, Watson, and ask for an appointment for this evening. You will find a chair here, Mr. Holmes. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> pray allow me to clear these bones from the seat. Uh, there we are. Huh? That's better. <laughs> and uh, and you, sir, Mr. Uh, Doctor. Uh, Doctor Watson, yes. Sir. Um, if you would have the goodness to put the Japanese vase to one side. Very well, sir. <laughs> Ah, thank you, thank you. You see round me my little interests in life, gentlemen. My doctor lectures me about never going out, but why should I go out when I have so much to hold me here? But you never go out, sir. Oh, now and again I drive down to the auction rooms. Otherwise, no, I, I very seldom leave this room. But, uh, Mr. Holmes, you can imagine what a terrific shock. Pleasant, mind you, but terrific it was for me when I heard of this unparalleled good fortune. I can well imagine. It only needs one more Gary Deb to complete the matter, and surely we can find one. It is possible. I had heard that you handled strange cases, Mr. Holmes, and that was why I wrote to you. You acted very wisely indeed, Mr. Gary Deb. You didn't mention our proposed visit here to Mr. John Garrett, by the way. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Dr. Watson specifically requested on the telephone... Uh, Mr. Garrett, are you really anxious to acquire an estate in America? Certainly not, sir. But this gentleman has assured me that he will buy me out as soon as we have established our claim. Five million dollars was the sum named. Indeed. There are a dozen specimens in the market at the present moment which would fill gaps in my collection and which I am unable to purchase for want of a few hundred pounds. Just think what I could do with five million dollars. Why, I, I should have the nucleus of a national collection. Uh, this American gentleman, Mr. John Garrett, mm -hmm. I understand from the admirably clear narrative you sent me that up to this week you were unaware of his existence. That is so. He called last Tuesday. Has he had or asked for any money from you? No, sir, never. You see no possible object he has in view? None, except what he states. I see. Mr. Garrideb, have you any articles of great value in your collection? No, sir, I am not a rich man. It's a good collection, but uh, not a very valuable one. Uh, how long have you been in these rooms? Nearly five years. 
Oh, excuse me, Mr. Holmes. Of course. Now, whoever can that be? Oh, Mr. Gallagher. What do that mean, sir? And you, Mr. Gallagher. Here we are. Here we are, Mr. Nathan Garrideb, my congratulations, sir. Congratulations, Mr. Gabby. You, you don't, you, you don't say... You're a rich that. man, sir. We're both rich men. Oh. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, we can only say we're sorry we've troubled you unnecessarily. Oh, no trouble. Here, Doctor, read this. It's an advertisement from a newspaper in Birmingham. My agent there sent it to me. Birmingham, Warwickshire, or Alabama? Warwickshire, of course, right here in your own Midlands. Go on, Doctor, read it. <coughs> Howard Garadab. Good heavens. Howard Garadab, constructor of agricultural machinery, binders, reapers, steam and hand plows. Ha! Spell P L O W S. The <laughs> provincial newspaper. Oh, do go on, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I said drills, harrows, farmers' carts, buckboards, and all other appliances. Uh, Estimates for artesian wells apply Grosvenor Buildings, Aston. Oh, glorious, wonderful! The third carriage there. Who said it? And now we must hustle. I've written to this guy and told him you'll be at his office tomorrow afternoon at four. You, uh, you want me to see him? Well, that's the idea. But uh, I haven't made such a journey for years. Oh, it's nothing, Mr. Garadib. But I, I... All you have to do is see this guy, explain the matter, and get an affidavit of his existence. Well, considering I've come all the way from the center of America, you surely don't figure a hundred miles or so too much trouble for your share? I quite agree, Mr. Garadeb. I think what Mr. John Garadeb says is quite true. You see? Well, well, if you insist, I shall go. Then that's agreed. No doubt you'll let me have a report as soon as you can. I must complete my records of the case, you understand. Sure, sure, I'll see to that. And now I'll have to get on. I'll call tomorrow and see you off to Birmingham, Mr. Mason. Good night, gentlemen. Uh, good, good night, Mr. Gordon. Good night, Mr. Gaddigan. Oh, dear me, dear me. Uh, Mr. Nathan, I should very much appreciate a glance over your collection. I could show you around now if you have the time. Unfortunately, no. But these specimens are so well labeled and classified that they hardly need your personal explanation. Oh, thank you. So, if I should be able to look in tomorrow while you're away... I presume there'd be no objection to my examining them? None at all, my dear sir. Most welcome. Thank you. Mrs. Saunders is in the basement up to four o'clock. I'll say a word to her and she'll be ready to let you in with her key. Capital. Oh, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. who's your house agent? My, um, oh, yes, uh, Holloway and Steele in the Edgware Road. But, uh, Why? I'm a bit of an archaeologist myself when it comes to houses. I was wondering whether this one was Queen Anne or Georgia. Oh, Georgian, beyond a doubt. Really? I should have thought a little earlier. <laughs> However, it's easily ascertained. Come along, Watson. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Gannon. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes. Goodbye, Doctor. And the best of success to you in Birmingham. Thank you. problem draws to a close, what? Yeah. No doubt you've outlined the solution in your own mind. I can make neither head nor tail of it. Did you notice nothing curious about that advertisement? No, I saw the word plow was misspelled. Oh, you did notice that, did you? Mm -hmm. Come, Watson, you improve all the time. Oh, really? Well, P-L-O-W is bad English, but it's good American. Buckboards is an American word also. And artesian wells are commoner in America than with us. In other words, it was a typical American advertisement, but purporting to be from an English firm. The printer had set it up as a receipt. Then you, you, you mean to suggest this American lawyer put it in himself? Yes, but why? There are other possibilities, of course. Uh -huh. But he wanted to get this good old fossil up to Birmingham at all costs. That's clear. But you urged him to go. I might have told him he was going on a wild goose chase, but on second thoughts it seemed better to clear the stage by letting him go. Ah. Uh -huh. So, tomorrow will speak for itself. Meanwhile, we have things to do. Such as? A visit to our old friend Inspector Lestrade at the yard. Uh -huh. Oh, but first, 
Since we're already in the Edgware Road, let us look in on Messrs. Holloway and Steele. Oh, the, the I, estate agent. <laughs> I find my curiosity about Mr. Nathan Garrideb's house positively mounting. Of course, Mr. Holmes, I know the house very well indeed. And uh, Mr. Nathan Garrideb has lived there for a number of years, I believe. Uh, five, it would be. The house was empty before that. Empty? For about a year, that is. While we were trying to trace the previous tenant. Done a flit, had he? Uh, you couldn't put it plainer, sir. I see. Uh, this vanishing tenant of yours, Mr. Holloway, may I know his name? I don't see why not. You run across him, we'll be glad to know. Name of Waldron. Waldron. Uh, how would one know him, then? Easy enough to spot. Tall, very dark features, and a beard. Remember him well. We'll keep a lookout for him. Well, we mustn't take up any more of your valuable time. Oh, this photograph. That's our bird, Watson. Why, it's just... How found what you're looking for, Mr. Holmes. Ah, Lestray. <laughs> it isn't the first time I've been indebted to this rogue's portrait gallery of yours. Well, you're welcome any time. Let's see, then. Oh, him. Killer Evans. Alias Moorcroft, real name James Winter, I see. That's right. I can tell you all about him. Excellent. Uh, Watson, be good enough to jot down a few notes, will you? Yes. Well, uh, yes, here we are. Now then, uh, Killer Evans, age 44, native of Chicago. Known to have shot three men in the States, but escaped from penitentiary through political influence. Came to London, let's see, uh, yes, 1893... Shot a man over cards in a nightclub in the Waterloo Road in January 1895. The man died, but he was shown to have been the aggressor, and Evans got manslaughter. He came out last year and hasn't been in trouble since. I see. A dangerous customer, then. Oh, very. Carries arms and is prepared to use them. Hmm. This man he shot in London, who was he? Prescott. Roger Prescott. Uh, came from Chicago, too, as a matter of fact. Quite a name there as a forger and counterfeiter. Really? Yeah. Uh, have you his picture amongst these? Oh, I doubt it. Once they're dead, you know, I'll... Oh, quite. Oh, it'll be stored away somewhere by now. Do you remember what he looked like, Lestrade? Uh, yes. Uh, tall chap. Uh, very dark features. Oh, and a beard. Ah. You know something about him, Mr. Holmes? No, no. Ah. No. Well, Lestrade, you've been as helpful as ever. Oh, no, mention it. I'll say this for Scotland Yard. There may be an occasional want of imaginative intuition here... But you lead the world for thoroughness and method. Good day, Lestrade. Holmes, our American lawyer, is none other than Killer Evans. With another alias to add to his list, John Garrideb. Well, the picture begins to define itself now. Our client, Mr. Nathan Garrideb, as he told us, has lived in that house for five years. Yeah. It was empty for a year before that, because the previous tenant, a man named Waldron, had unaccountably disappeared. Now, Waldron was a tall, bearded man with very dark features. So was Prescott, the man Killer Evans shot in 1895, which would be about the time Waldron disappeared. Then you, you think that Prescott and Waldron were the same man? Prescott, alias Waldron, was connected with Killer Evans, alias John Garrideb. Gary Depp is interested in the house in which Waldron once lived. So, as a working hypothesis, I think we may take it that Prescott, the American forger and counterfeiter, used to live in the very room which our innocent friend now devotes to his museum. So, you see, at last we have a link. And the next link? We must go and look for that tomorrow while our client is absent in Birmingham. Oh, incidentally, Watson... I should devote an hour this evening to cleaning your service revolver. If our Wild West friend tries to live up to his nickname, we must be ready for it. What do you need in here? Yeah, it's some good fresh air. Close the door, my dear Watson. Lock it and remove the key. Unless I'm much mistaken, our American friend will be coming visiting shortly. He mustn't suspect that we're here. What shall we do when you come? Now, let's see. Ah, yes. Yes, that cupboard in the corner. There's room behind it for us both. Uh -huh. What makes you think you come? Shh. Keep your voice down. Uh -huh. He wanted to get Nathan Garrideb out of this room. That's very clear. As the old fellow never goes out of his own accord, it took some planning to arrange it. The whole of this Garrideb invention was apparently for no other end. Good heavens. I must say there's a certain devilish ingenuity about it. Well, lucky for him the room's tenanted by someone with such an outlandish name. And that undoubtedly gave him his opening. Yeah. 
But he wove his plot with a remarkable cunning. But what's he after, then? As far as I can see, it has nothing at all to do with Nathan Garadib. It's something connected to the man he shot, Prescott. There's some guilty secret in this room. Or so I read it. Well, maybe there's something valuable in the collection after all. You know, something the old man doesn't realize he owns. No. The fact that Roger Prescott of Evil Memory once lived in these rooms points to some deeper reason than that. Listen. He's here. Get behind the cupboard. Seeking, I trust. Oh, uh, well, I guess you've been one too many for me, Mr. Holmes. Saw through my game, eh, and played me for a sucker from the first. Well, I sure hand it to you. Oh, Watson! And this guy, you get it, eh? Watson! It's all right. He's unconscious. The jaw must hurt, Watson. No, I say the jaw must hurt. I don't think he's anything, Holmes. My side. Yeah, quickly. Let's see. No, it's nothing, Holmes. It's a mere scratch. Oh, so you're right, right Watson. Oh. By the Lord Harry, it's as well for that devil there. If he'd killed you, Watson, he'd never have left this room alive. I'm all right, Holmes. <laughs> Just a shock. Oh, look, see, I can... I can stand that side. Oh. Then come along, my dear. Uh, Let's see what it is beneath the floorboard that's so interested this car. It's a... It's a cellar. Yeah, just enough light to... Oh, of course. Machinery, bottles, paper. He's coming round, what? Now, Mr. Evans, what have you to say to yourself? That's Prescott's outfit. The greatest counterfeiter London ever saw. No man could tell a Prescott banknote from a Bank of England one. You shot Prescott, didn't you? Yeah. I got five years for it. When I should have got a medal the size of a soup plate. If I hadn't put him out, he'd have flooded London with his notes. <laughs> Go on. Well, I ask you. After serving five years, can you wonder that I wanted to get back here? And then what? I find this crazy old boob of a bug hunter squatting right on top of a fortune. I'm never going out. You may think my scheme was far-fetched. But how else do you shift a guy out of his own home? With your record, I'm surprised you didn't use a more direct method. No, sir. I'm a soft-hearted guy that can't begin shooting unless the other man has a gun, too. Just now, if Dr. Watson hadn't waved that gun at me, I'd have given up like a lamb. Say, Mr. Holmes, what have I done wrong, anyway? I've not used this plant. I never hurt the old geezer. What do you get me on? Attempted murder will do for the moment. Hmm? But that concerns the yard, not us. Who knows? When they hear you've led them to a fortune in counterfeit money, they may even give you that medal after all. An unappreciative bench took a less favorable view, and Killer Evans returned to those shades from whence he'd just emerged. As for poor old Nathan Garadev, he never got over the shock of his dissipated dreams. He was last heard of at a nursing home in Brixton. As for me, it was worth a wound to know the depth of loyalty and love which lay behind the cold mask of Sherlock Holmes. When I was shot, the clear, hard eyes had dimmed for one moment. The firm lips had shaken. For the one and only time, I'd caught a glimpse of a great heart as well as a great brain. All my years of humble but single-minded service culminated.